Hello and welcome to another episode of Pros Pondering Paint, the How to Start and Run a Successful Painting Business series, episode number three. Today we're going to talk about, we're still at the very beginning phases, so today we're going to talk about the type, different types of work vehicles that you definitely want to look at. Now, Brandon, you've had, I've seen multiple, multiple different vehicles that you've had over the years, including one was an ambulance, which I'm guessing that's probably not the best place to start. So what do you recommend? <laughs> the big choices are, do you get a, a, a truck or do you get a van, right? And no matter what I say from this point out, let's all agree that trucks are just cooler, right? They're a lot cooler. However, are they more practical? That becomes the question. So uh, when, you, when you think about this, as far as accessibility, right? Now, granted, you can have a truck, you can have the topper with all the little doors that open and close, but for me, I choose a van. And there's a couple of reasons for that. Number one, it, it offers more space for shelving, right? Because you can have shelf from floor to ceiling, so to speak, and it can be taller. I can crouch and, and walk into my van and look at everything and grab what I want. But one of the biggest things, because we live in Minnesota, it gets really cold in the winter. Now my paint goes obviously into the van and it's a little bit more climate controlled than it would be if it was sitting in the bed of a truck. Yeah, that's definitely a big, big concern in Minnesota for about 14 months out of the year. Here it's always cold, but, and I've seen, I've seen a lot of customers go, I mean, everybody's got their preference, like you said. So with, and I've seen them bounce between a truck or a van, minivan, a full size cargo van. And when you're starting out, you might not have the luxury of choice. It's whatever you've got, but I agree with all of your points and I can't argue it other ways. People, some have, you know, SUVs, small SUVs or full size SUVs, which is essentially kind of like a van. It's really kind of use utilizing the vehicle that you have access to. And then also really what you get comfortable to. And to your point about the climate control, there's been lots of times where I've seen guys, we load them up with paint and they've got it all in the cab of their truck and all the rest of their tools are in the back of the truck. But due to the temperature, they're trying to keep it down. And even in hotter climates, you have to take into account. So if you're in Arizona, it gets to 110 down there. You want to have that paint in a more climate controlled type vehicle versus the bed of a truck where it could be 150 degrees in the bed of your truck. That's not good for the products either. So those are all things that you have to take into account. Also getting around and I've seen very organized vans. I've got a customer uh, who here in Minnesota, he's got one of those really cool Mercedes vans and he's got $30,000 worth of cabinets in it. Everything's labeled. It's got its own little place. You could go in there and eat off it. It's pristine and clean. Granted, he's been in the business for 20 years and he's reinvested very well into his business and he's very successful. So he does that. You don't have to do that. And I've seen beds of trucks or vans where I ah, just throw it anywhere and you know, things are loaded and tipped and everything else. So it really, whatever kind of works and whatever you want to do, especially to start up. Yeah, absolutely. And as I said, I've, I've had trucks before you, you'll adapt to whatever you have, right? So you, you can make that work. You can make a van work. I just found over my 20 plus years of painting experience, a van works better for me. Trucks are cooler. In my opinion, vans are more practical. And like you said, as your business evolves, you will find out what vehicle works best for you. Like I said, you had an ambulance for a while, which was a really cool vehicle and gave you a ton of storage. And, and a lot of attention, a and, lot of attention. <laughs> and a lot of attention. Um, I've got a, another customer who has a Metro bus, essentially, it's kind of the short bus. And you can see that thing from a mile and a half away. It's beautiful and it he can put full you know ladder extension ladders in there it's got a, a table in the back where he sits and has lunch and writes his bids while he's on site and there you know, he started out in a truck and then went to a van and now he's in this i know that people have i've seen honda civics roll up on job sites so it's really a matter of they're going what you have access to when you're starting out and then let it evolve into what works best for you absolutely absolutely and you know just plotting and planning what tools you might have, where you would put them might help you lay out for what vehicle could potentially be best for you. Correct. Yeah. And as you're growing your business, always take that into account. You know, if you've got ladders that you like to keep in the vehicle, make sure you get a vehicle that you can either put the ladder in or put the ladder on top of, and you don't want to get something that's, you know, like a 
giant expedition because you might not be able to get a ladder up on top of that just because you'd have to crawl all the way up and then lash that thing down even though well, you, need a, you need a ladder to put the ladder on <laughs> correct <laughs> yeah granted it would hold a ton of product and hold mm -hmm. a ton of gear but if you can't fully utilize it or if it's you know you're working in a downtown metro area you know a for expedition isn't really practical yeah and and that's a really good point you have to know your area and and what type of projects you're going to be on now, if you're in residential areas or you're in new construction or stuff like that, or like you said, if you're in a metro area, all those might weigh a little bit on what decision you're going to make with regards to vehicles. I agree. And I guess what I always like to see, no matter what type of vehicle you have, you know, have it look presentable because that will also go a long way to promoting your business. When you put, pull up to a job site, to a bid in a vehicle, that doesn't look like it's been a demolition derby or it just came out of the impound lot, that goes a long way for a customer to go, you know, I can work with this person. Because if you roll up in some jalopy, it might be a cool vehicle and you might love it, but that customer might go, well, if that's what their vehicle looks like, I wonder what their paint job is going to look like. Yes, yes. And have your vehicle as clean as you possibly can make it. Uh, granted, roads are dirty, you know, whatever else, but... You know, e even if your vehicle is a little bit older, as long as it's clean and well-maintained, people will respect that. We've talked about uh, branding and logoing, uh, not logoing, but branding in a previous video. What about on the side of your vehicle? Do you promote on your side of your vehicle or not? I would say it's free space. That is free advertising, a free billboard. You should. It can be something very simple. You can get those magnets print it up and they can just stick right on there some people have full wraps uh, you know whatever but to me that's that's a really useful investment because then quite literally it's potentially making you money while parked in your driveway yeah i agree with that and yeah the magnets are, are a low barrier into it and it gets you on there and then if say it's you know the family truckster that you go on family vacations with you can peel those magnets off if you want to go driving to another state, not have to worry about it with or driving around town and you know not want to be advertising for whatever reason, take that off. Then the next day you go back to work, slap it right back on and go. Like I said, it's really boils down to what works best for you. Well, that does it for this episode of starting and running your own paint business. We're on number three right now, so we're going to keep rolling right through them and we'll see you next time. As always, thank you for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe.